So this young guy just starts his own business and he's rented out a, his beautiful office, decked it out. It's all neat with this, this cool decor and, and modern, you know, deco type stuff. And so he's sitting there and he sees uh, someone come through the front area to the reception area. And and so, you know, he wants to kind of look like he's the, the big wig hotshot. So this guy picks up the phone and he starts to pretend like he has this big deal going. So he's throwing out these huge figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 500,000. Eh, yeah, that, that's workable. We can do that. Uh, maybe we can get that out to you next week. Uh, you know, and, and then over time, uh, we, we can build up to, to, to more, you know, expansion for you. And, and so he goes on making these other commitments and whatnot. So finally he hangs up the phone and, and this, this person who was in the reception area, he looks at him and he says, can I help you? And the guy goes, yeah, uh, I've come to activate your phone lines. <laughs> Welcome to the Conquer Life Podcast, hosted by the coolest dynamic duo husband and wife team since Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, Corey and Topanga, and even George and Weezy. Bringing you life experience, knowledge, wisdom, and insight to help you in your own life journey. This is the Conquer Life Podcast with Trey and Autopolis. Episode 20. This is our top 10 list of lessons from the prophet, a.k.a. Marcus Lemonis. Welcome back, welcome back, another week, another episode, and I think this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a, you know, somewhat quick, we're going to, we're going to run through this, this list as you heard, this is our top 10 lessons learned from the prophet, uh, aka Marcus Lemonis, we absolutely love the show, um, and if you haven't heard some of the previous episodes where we mentioned the prophet, then you might want to go back and listen to them. Because then you would already know we love the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we get into that, let's quickly do highs and lows. Okay. Your turn to start first. Highs. All right. Highs. Uh, for the 9 to 5, a book that we were waiting for the publisher uh, didn't come through. But we were able to uh, find another resource to be able to provide one of the DEP schools with one of the resources they need. So off the plate and ready to go. So that's a win at work. That's a win. A very big win. Okay. All right. Um, My high. What did I say it was? I know we previously discussed these. What did I say it was? I forget already. Oh, that your 9 to 5 was slowing down. Is that what it was? Yeah, Yeah. that's how we got on hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have so many great things going. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I guess the high for me, actually, I have two. I have two. The high for me is that in my position at the university that we both work at, um, it's slowing down for me because it's the holiday season and we're not really doing too many recordings right this minute. I think I have a couple of recordings um, next week right before the break and then probably the once we come back a few recordings uh, video recordings to get plugged into some online courses then so I have a little bit of recording and editing to do then Um, but my other high is I am sharpening my skill for creating the quote cards that we've been putting on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn Um, in fact Uh, this is what I want you all to do. We want to try to work on building our Facebook community. So if you can help us out, if you can go over to Facebook and if you're driving, just wait till you get to where you're going, of course. But if you're sitting and listening, then go over to Facebook and go to facebook.com forward slash the conquer life mindset. All one string, no spaces, And go ahead and click the like. And 
we would really, really love it if you shared the page. That would that would be a bonus. Uh, and then go ahead and you know make a post to the page and say, hey, I, I found you all through the podcast, and uh, we're going to give you a shout out on the next episode. So so do that, and, and, and we're definitely going to be uh, looking out for people joining the Facebook community. And check out some of those quote cards. Lots of motivation and inspiration there. And that was just a quick plug. But, yeah, now Lowe's. Lowe's. I don't have any, but I just came up with a good idea. We're coming into a new year. And I've noticed for the past couple of weeks there hasn't been really too many lows because it's it's a shift of mindset, so to speak. So Very true. And prepping for the new year, how about we just cancel lows altogether and only focus on our highs? I like that. That goes along with self-awareness and learning to focus on strengths versus weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say my low this week was nothing. I really don't have anything to complain about, and I'm trying to reduce the complaining anyway. So that's what we'll do for the new year. That works for me. 2016, it's all about the highs. <clears throat> Hit those mountain peaks and, and, and focus on the positivity going on in your life. And any other housekeeping? I don't think so. That's I'm it? I'm excited to get started. You want to jump straight into this? Yes. All right. Top 10 lessons from the prophet, a.k.a. Marcus Lemonis. I hope the producers are listening to this show. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. So awesome. Don't worry. We're not going to spam the crap out of you all. But, uh, but yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Well, be- before we even actually get started on that, I, I actually want to say something that cracks me up about Marcus, especially watching the show for the past couple seasons and being able for him to say, oh, I'm not a consultant. Yet he does so many of the things that – consultants are trained to do yeah but he's not doing it from a consultant perspective he's just doing it from a a uh, investor investor and it, brilliant just absolutely brilliant and he's just awesome well i know why he has to do it i mean would you want to invest your tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars into something that you're not going to come in and throw on a consulting cap on and fix some stuff no. Exactly. That's why he has his three P's. People, process, and product. You really have to watch the show. I mean, you really, if you don't know about the three P's of Marcus Lemonis, you need to check him out. Uh, and, and, and real quick, it's funny because I remember when we first started watching Marcus Lemonis, and I started to, uh, you know, I, I got on Google. I'm like, okay, who is this guy? And I'm seeing that he's the CEO of, uh, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I don't know exactly the name of the company, but I know that they published the Good Sam RV magazine. And the reason that w- sticks out to me is because when I was growing up, I lived with my grandparents for a small stint. And my grandfather, well, my grandparents had an uh, had an RV, a, mo- a motorhome. So we would always get these, uh, we would get filled in stream and we would get the Good Sam publication. And I used to love thumbing through those magazines so whenever I saw it, when I saw, I made that connection. When I saw that Marcus Lemonis was the CEO of that organization, I said, oh, I said, go ahead then. He's the CEO of the, the Good Sam magazine. So that was really cool for me to find out and make that connection and uh, kind of bring some nostalgia and makes me, uh, helps me to, to remember my grandfather. Uh, he passed away uh, in 2010, um, about a week before Thanksgiving. So rest in peace, Papa. And uh, and so now, here we go. Top 10. And we're going to do this countdown. So number 10, go for it. Ditch pride. One thing that I see evident in, in a lot of the shows, especially is when he is trying to shift their mindset and have them being open to learning and growing, that has to go out the door. Because you know what? If you didn't need his help, why'd you call him? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pride is, is isn't that one of the uh, seven deadly sins? Yep. Yeah, that's it's as an entrepreneur or business owner, you have to ditch the pride. I know you have pride in, in, in your product or in your company, but guess what? If everything was all kosher and going smoothly, you wouldn't need to call in Marcus. So you really have to ditch the pride uh, as a business owner um, when when you know and, and be willing to accept outside perspective as to how to change your situation. Yep. 
All right. And, and, and by the way, we're, we're just going to make quick remarks on these. We're not going to drag this show out on, on this episode. So go ahead, run it. Number nine. Number nine. It's not about what you like. It's about what the market likes. I should say Marcus likes. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we, we just saw in the recent episode on Wicked, and this is where this one originally came from. Uh, they were the, the owner of the Wicked. Uh, Wicked. 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 <laughs> Witches and wizards. <laughs> the Wicked um, Candle Company had a story theme behind all of his candles, and, and he was trying to, you know, basically spread what he wanted to but he wasn't paying attention to what the consumers want so he has all his stuff sitting on shelves not being sold or not getting reorders done because he wasn't paying attention to what the market was wanting so you always want to be mindful of that use your creativity and 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 fuel it into your your product but you also need to be aware of what people are wanting. Otherwise, they're going to sit on the shelf and get dusty. <laughs> shelf on the elf. Or, no. It's shelf on the elf. <laughs> elf. Elf on the shelf. <laughs> Golly, how did I mess that one up? Um, yeah, that's extremely, extremely important. Um, market research. You have to pay attention to what the consumers are gravitating toward. Pay attention to the trends. Now... That doesn't mean you have to compromise your your vision with your product. It just simply means that you might have to make some tweaks. And in that specific episode that you were talking about with the new labels that Marcus had the uh, the the Wicked found Wicked yeah Wicked <laughs> I'm about to say it the Wicked founders Wicked candle makers uh, with the new labels he was like you tweak it just a little bit and and draw down these colors and make this one color pop and blah 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 and so it it, you know and and i could tell on the guy's face he's like i don't know i don't know i and and like i'm i'm you know if he were thinking i would say that he was thinking this out loud i don't know about this i don't know oh i don't know i mean this guy had to give up a little bit of relinquish a little bit of control over his creativity and there's nothing wrong with that Again, pitch or ditch the pride, accept the outside perspective, make some tweaks to go along with what the consumers are moving toward. Number eight. Number eight. Face the music. You need to face the truth of your business. That's uh wow. We've seen a few episodes, quite a few, when, you know, Marcus gets to the financials, right? And he's going over the financials with them, and oh, bless, bless their hearts. You know they're in the red, like hardcore, but they think everything's going great. Oh, we're selling, and 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 we sell out, and 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 our employees are happy. But Marcus is like, no. Do you do do you see this bottom line right here? And and granted, you know, again, it's about people, process and product. However, the whole purpose is to turn a profit. You want to get into the black, right? Right. I so, hope so, yeah, exactly. So you have to face the truth, face the music of your business. If if it's not if the numbers are showing that you're in like the danger zone, you have to face the music. And that goes along even with the other two. Like accept the outside perspective. Accept someone such as Marcus Lemonis's grand wisdom. Accept that. Well, it's I, not hard. I, I think it's also even more so when, when you're looking at the people or you're looking at the processes, you know, he he comes out from an outside perspective where they've been in the in, so to speak in the trenches for so long they're not aware they don't yeah. realize that there's so much dysfunction and when he goes to point something out there's like there's nothing wrong with this this is how we've always done it well the way you've always done it <laughs> is because you've been in the trenches for so long that you don't see that there's more efficient way to get things done there's way to cut costs <coughs> excuse me this is the way we've always done it. That is one of the most toxic statements that a business owner can make. That also goes back into your pride. Yeah. I mean, it all does. It all fits because if this is the way that you've always done it, 
and you're about to go out of business, you and might need to what change something. Yeah, change a few <laughs> things. We, uh, n- number seven. Know your numbers. I love it when they tell you, oh, yeah, you know, we, we seem to be okay and we're doing this and we're doing that. And all of a sudden you find out they have like fifty or $60,000 uh, in extra debt and they possibly could be losing their house. So they have three or four different people that they still have to pay back. And they don't re- even really know what they're running per month. They're just operating, operating without keeping track. Or specifically product numbers. Uh, cupcakes. How much does it cost to make one of these cupcakes? Uh, I don't. Uh, Twenty three cents. Uh, no. How much does it? Co- uh, uh, let me see. Uh, about thirty three cents. Okay. All right. Later. Time passes. Okay. Let's look at the financials. Oh, so it actually costs fifty three cents. And that's not even factoring in your fixed costs of electric and rent. rent, things of that nature. Know your numbers. So if you don't know your numbers, how do you know where you need to possibly improve? We noticed this with the um, Standard Burger. In that specific episode, uh, they had the regular burger that came with lettuce, tomato, and onions on it for seven dollars. In, in this episode, that was like a um, let's go back. It was a, a, a go back and check on them. Yes. Episode. Okay. Yes, and um, they were also offering a regular burger that was just bread and and the patty, and they weren't able to be able to distinguish when their numbers were 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 coming through. Why are we still losing money? We're, we're selling more of these burgers, and I should be saving money by not putting on the lettuce, tomatoes, onions. And, and onions on them. And when Marcus ran the numbers, he realized, you know, very quickly, your small cost for the lettuce, tomatoes, and onions was actually making you 80 cents, which was offsetting the cost of what the burger was costing them. Yeah. So, um, so in other words, that difference between the lettuce, tomato, and the onion – and other herbage that was on the burger <clears throat> was less than that dollar that they were knocking off the price. Yes. So they had a huge gap per burger. Yes. Okay. And what did he do? He got in contact with the vendor, and because they were going to be franchising these stores, he was able to re- renegotiate the cost for that to bring the cost of their meat down uh, per shipment. So then if they still wanted to sell that regular burger, they would be able to break a profit on it. Correct. If. But you yeah. wouldn't let them. <laughs> yeah, because it was like, <laughs> why are you doing this? I mean, I mean, Marcus broke out the scales, you know, the, the little digital scales, and they were literally weighing out tomatoes and onions and lettuce. So, again, that's what you'll have to do to know your numbers. You have to really break down the the various portions of your product to figure your numbers yeah know your numbers because especially with the numbers the numbers are not going to lie in that sense and that's where your profit margin is yeah number six be transparent okay (laughs) i'm being transparent you're giving us all this dead air (laughs) um be transparent and what that simply means is don't hold things back We've seen a number of episodes where other things come to light later during the episode when Marcus is like, look, I asked you about this earlier and you said that, oh, no, that's no, uh uh-uh. Be transparent. You have to be up front and see, let's flip this to the consulting side. When a consultant goes into a business and they're doing their 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 needs assessment, their fact finding, their interviews, their their they're looking over the quantitative or the qualitative data. They're looking over all of these aspects of the business. And when dealing with people, see people with will withhold to save face because they don't want to make it seem like it's really that bad. No. If you want it to get better, you have to be honest. You have to be transparent. You have to give forth all of the information that you know of 
to the investor or to the to the consultant in this case to Marcus Lemonis and you have to be you know you have to be square you can't you can't fudge things I mean that's what 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 I mean that's a basic fundamental of business you have to be transparent I think it also goes across the board with even their type of leadership you know in their role as the business owner oftentimes they'll try to keep it away from their employees of how much danger or trouble they're in or what's at risk. And because they are not being transparent, their their people who are loyal to them are not aware, so they're not really trying to to, to help as much as as they could offer. And then, you know, I, I understand where they're coming from. They don't want to freak the employees out. And I mean, how many episodes have we seen when once the employees find out how dire everything is the situation is they're like oh my gosh i didn't know oh i mean that's a scary thing it's like oh my gosh my livelihood is about to go down the train you have to be open you have to be honest with your employees you have to be honest with marcus you have to be honest with your with your clients you know so all that plays into being transparent number five number five know your why why are you doing this? Why? What? What is your purpose for even being in business? What is? What is your mission? What is your goal? What are you trying to achieve out of this? And sticking to it, you know, if you are aware of what your why is, there is so much more that you can be able to do to to keep it there and keep that vision going and strong. If you're not aware of it, you're going on that little potato hamster wheel. Well, yeah, if you're not really truly aware of your why, you're you're playing business. You're a entrepreneur instead of an entrepreneur. And we we we've talked about how important it is to know your why across every area of life that you, you know, you embark upon. Um for business owners, why are you in the business that you're in? Is it to put some money in your pocket, which, again, we kind of urge against that cannot be your sole why, because if it's all about the money, then when the money's not there, you're not going to care. You have to really dig deep. And, and I know that we've seen in a few episodes, it was it was, you know, for family. It was for, you know, this is my vision. Um, it was for the remembrance of a loved one and you know, in those times, that's where it really gets intimate. And, and you see people break down in tears. And and that's where my heart goes out for them. And that's when I really start, you know, cheering, cheering these business owners on. Like, I really want them to succeed because their heart is in it. It's not just, I'm just trying to make a million dollars. No, it's it's for someone. It's for something. It's for some purpose. It's for some principle. Know your why. Why are you embarking upon this journey of entrepreneurship? Why are you in business? Why are you in the career that you're in? What make what drives you daily to see things through, to satisfy your clients, your customers? What drives you to build the team relationships with your colleagues, with your coworkers, with your employees? Know your why. Excellent. Number four. Numero cuatro. Show up, work hard, and respect people. This is a three in one. Show up. Be present. Be present in your business. You can't be the guy or the gal who, okay, I'm going off to the spa now. You guys got this. You can't be running to Mexico if you're a partner in the business. You can't be just, you know, going off to bars if you're a partner in the business. You just can't. Be present. Show up. Working hard. That is, from from a leadership standpoint, vital to your organization. Because if your employees see you putting in top effort, they're going to follow suit. They're going to follow the leader. If they're going to see you slacking off and you're not showing up, 
what do you think they're going to do? The same thing. Because, see, the leader, the owner, the entrepreneur, you set the tone. Okay? And your employees will follow the leader. So if you're fired up and you get in there and you bust your hiney every day that you're in there, guess what your employees are going to do? You treat your people right, which we talk about that, but you just, you really show a love and that's your why coming through. You show a love and passion for what it is that you're doing. Your employees will pick up on that and they're going to subconsciously follow suit. Very important. Also very important is respecting your people. Ah, there we go. Because you have your why, you're working hard, you're showing up. But if you don't take care of your people, you're not going to get to where you want to be. Your people are an extension of you. Your people are what helps drive the engine to the destination to fulfilling your vision and your business. And when you take care of them, they will take care of you. They're the front faces between your customer and your product. Take care of them. Treat them with respect. I think that lesson really sticks out to me from the uh, Key Lime Pie Company, which we visited in Key West. And it's awesome. Their pies are amazing. Amazing. Like, seriously, we bought a whole pie. It was like 20 bucks. And, and took pictures yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was I mean it was awesome. We live in Palm Beach County, so it's a you know three to five hour drive. If you're if you're tootling along, then yeah, it's going to be five six hours by the time you get to Key West. But we made it a point like, where is this place? We got to go to this place that Marcus Simone was at, and and we walk in and we're like, wow, yeah. And we looked at the storefront, and and it's 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 just remarkable to to trace those steps and and see what has happened to that business and how they've grown. And I guarantee when we were in there, I mean, there were quite a few patrons that came right in too. I mean, you know, it's not right on, I think, Duval, but it's right off of it. So it's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, and, and the reason why this lesson stuck out to me as far as treating your people right was the manager, the lady who was pregnant. She was pregnant and I mean, she wasn't making hardly diddly squat, but she's busting her butt and she was there. And she also had another job at a bar as a bartender. So Marcus is like, wait a minute. So you're working at the bar and then you come here and you help out over here, too. She was like an office person, like an admin, basically, right? Yeah, but yeah. doing so much more than than what her job description oh my gosh. Would, would be. And she was really, really um, just handling it. She was essentially running the business. Yeah. So what did Marcus do, though? He made her basically the, 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 the managing partner down there. Yeah. Bumped up her salary to where she didn't have to work the second job at the bar. She had enough to, 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 you know, to provide for a family. And it was just remarkable. Again, Marcus set the tone. And when they did the, uh, the revisit, I mean, you could see she was just happy. Everything was going cool, you know. And, hey, it's Key West. <laughs> you got to love it. Yeah, it's just... just. I was just actually laughing because you brought brought the fact up that she was pregnant. I remember when we were going there to visit, I was eight months pregnant with our fourth. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm walking around and I wanted that pie. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, just, I just wanted the pie. <laughs> and it was good. You all, if you're ever in Key West, make sure that you visit the Key Lime Pie Company. Um, just Google it. Google it. Actually, the link to their site will be in the show notes. Awesome. 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 Ready for number three? Number three, listen, listen versus hearing, accept feedback, evolve. There is nothing worse than someone that you're trying to help coach along and to make adjustments and, 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 and change modes and in, into which the way that, that the business operates and you don't listen to what the direction 
directions are. I'm going to paraphrase this. I'm the paraphrase king. Here we go. Stephen Covey. Most people listen to reply rather than to understand. Okay. I've seen it so many times. Marcus is trying to tell somebody something and they're interrupting him and cutting him off. And, oh, but you don't understand. Blah, 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 blah. No. Listen. Not just see, see, listening to hear is that's going in one ear and right out the other. I'm sure you might have heard that maybe from your parents. What I tell you? Oh, I know it went in one ear and right out the other. Yep, exactly. But when you listen to understand, then you process the information that's coming in. You stop and you think and you give credence to what that other communicator has told you, right? Listen to understand. You ready? Yeah. Number two. Kind of goes along with number four, but it's just so important. We got to reiterate it again. Care about your people. They're your driving force, again, between your customer and your business. Take care of them. And and this also goes along with knowing your numbers and everything. Because we know in this day and, away, day and age, you have the push for $15 minimum wage and everything. Um, here's the deal. All right. The cost of living has increased. And it depends upon what region you live in and, and things of that nature. But you have to be mindful of that. Take care of your people. You can't pay them crap wages and expect them to do a great job for you. You'll see it. That's why. Why do you think fast food has such a high turnover? Because you know why? Number one, the employees think, screw this. I can go somewhere else. I can go somewhere else in retail and make more than what I'm making here and not have to deal with all of the nonsense. And the employers in fast food are thinking, ha. They come a dime a dozen. And I know that you know it's the truth. Now, I'm not saying every fast food employer out there or franchisee thinks that way. But I'm saying that a lot of them do. That's why there's this huge push for to raise this minimum wage and everything. Because, again, the cost of living has gone up. People can't survive on on crap wages. And before you get into the oh, high school people, blah, blah, blah. Who do you think runs those stores during the daytime when high school children are in school? High school kids clock in after four o'clock. Four to close. Okay. So during the daytime, you have hardworking adults who have families to provide for. Or maybe the college student in between classes. That's why Starbucks provides, oh, I don't know what, free tuition to Arizona State University online. Yeah, because they're taking care of their people. And they even give their people the option, hey, if you want to explore other opportunities after you get your degree, no problem. You don't have to pay us back. Or you can stay with us and grow within the organization. That's taking care of your people. And and I think that you have something to speak on this yeah, because I, you were I, in fast food. Yeah, I, I, I do. And um, trying to retain people in fast food is like trying to retain nonprofit volunteers. In all honesty, it, it, it can be very difficult unless you know what to do because, again, your wages are not there. So for, from a leadership standpoint, you have to be very creative in being able to take care of them in ways that are that are under your control. For example, several years back, I had a closing shift, and it was 4th of July, right a couple miles from downtown West Palm Beach. Fireworks are going off. We weren't busy all night. Come 11 o'clock when the lobby closes, a big rush of people from everybody from downtown was coming in. And I had... Fourth a, on Flagler. Fourth on Flagler. I had a lobby packed and and we had a large McDonald's, you know, we were a $2 million store and we had it coming in. My crew, uh, keep in mind, um, all teenagers, except a couple closers that, that, that were adults busting their butt from, from the time that 
the people came in until we cleared them out. I was so proud of them that I went on my own and the next day ordered them all shirts just to let them know how much I was, I, I, I was there for them out of my own money. And they got those shirts. They were proud. They were wearing them on the weekends and strutting their stuff around. Then the daytime shift, people were like, where did you get the shirts? Well, Autumn got us, you know, for, for this, that, and the other. And at the time, I was a first assistant, so the store manager took notice. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to take care of them. You want to earn these shirts? You guys need to start to start start doing these things, too. Um, but they wore it proudly. And, and it was something that, again, was in my control. Could I give them more money? I wasn't in the position to do so. But I can take care of them and show how much that I appreciated them, and they worked even harder. And, you know, just that small gesture, a T-shirt, Yeah, that's a small gesture of appreciation. That's like when they say, you know, when you have a client and you want to thank them, send them a, a handwritten thank you card. It's the same. It's along the same lines, and that that little gesture of appreciation that lets your employees know that you care, that you're happy that they're there, that you're happy that they give their hard work and their 100% effort. Let me add this. And I, and, and, and I can say this because I've lived it. When you take care of them like that, especially in the position to where you have a fast food, those two years that the students would be from going from high school from 16 to 18, they wouldn't leave until they were 18. Mm-hmm. They kept it there. Mm-hmm. Because it's the right place for them if you take care of them. Exactly. Drum roll. All right, here we go. The top number one lesson that we've learned from the prophet, a.k.a. Marcus Lemonis. You must be willing to learn. Wait, wait. Yep, exactly. That's that aha moment. Yes, majorly. I, 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 how can you grow if you're not willing to learn anything new? Or change things or see things from different perspectives. Well, I remember Marcus even saying in I want to say that it was an ink interview. Uh, It might have been on the show, but I mean, if it was on the show was, you know, a couple seasons ago. But he likes to work with people who are willing to learn. Sweet Pete's. Sweet Pete's. (laughs) Sweet Pete's. The candy guy in Jacksonville. This guy, he he is the most humble. Oh my gosh, I have so much admiration for he and his wife. Yes. Because it was he and his wife that, that ran this. And I mean, he just wanted to learn from Marcus. And he followed Marcus's lead. There was no friction between he and Marcus. No. None. Because it's like, look, hey. I'm an open book. Teach me. And that's what you have to have. You have to have that number one quality. Be willing to learn. If you don't, you know, you're just going to sabotage yourself. Because with that growth, with that development, it's going to take you to the next level. Sweet Pete's, you were just bringing up. Mm -hmm. He went from what what I think they were clearing a hundred thousand, maybe two hundred thousand dollars a year, but they were barely even getting by. They hadn't taken a check, and I don't know how long. And they were in that little house with that with their partner landlord guy. It was it was just and it was off in the cut in Jacksonville. And Marcus was like, "All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go find another space for you. We're gonna buy this guy out. We're gonna set you up good." And that's exactly what he did. And now I think they're 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 getting a second location that's huge. Oh, they already got it. Yeah. They already got yeah, it. Yeah, it's now. huge. Oh my god, huge! And they were they. It's they like some Fao Schwartz thing. At least over a million last year. I I don't. That that I don't remember I, that part. Yeah, you remember it? Was, okay. Yeah, I mean they they were just amazed at how much they were, and in the fact that they were growing it to the point to where they were needing even more space because yeah. things were going so well. Yeah. Why? Because he was willing to learn. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he trusted that Marcus knew what he was doing, and he had a lot to be able to teach him, and he wanted to be able to get from point A 
to point B to yeah. point Z. Yeah. I think the other thing that I love with that is that, I mean, this is on, you know, this is um, speaking on Marcus's brilliance. He placed some of the Sweet Pete's products in some of his other ventures of confectionery uh, stores. Oh, that's a great marketing yeah, tactic. Yeah, Cro cross market. I mean, why not? You already have. I want to say that he had something in Key Lime, but maybe not. I may uh, be wrong. I, no, I think uh, in in one of his his uh, stores for the pastries, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I mean, all of that matters, but but ultimately, as an entrepreneur, business owner. When someone who has greater knowledge of this business world and of the business acumen comes along, I mean, that's why he's called the prophet. P-R-O-F-I-T. You must be willing to learn. Have to. Episode 20. Lessons from the prophet. A.K.A. Marcus Lemonis. You all do us that favor, log on to Facebook, facebook.com forward slash The Conquer Life Mindset, all one string. Hit that like button for us, please. We really would appreciate it. Hit the share. Leave a comment on the page that you learned about us from the podcast, and we will definitely be shouting you out on the future podcast episodes. Um, let's see here. What do we have? To close out the, the year, we have two more episodes for December 23rd, How to Impact the World with Courage, Authenticity, Vulnerability, and Grit. Sounds so familiar, like you said it so, like that before. Yeah, like last week. <laughs> <laughs> and December 30th, leading up to New Year's. Out with the old, in with the new, celebrate 2015. These are going to be some great wrap-up episodes. You all tune in. Tune in. Final remark? Yes, and if Marcus Lemonis does end up listening to this, we want to meet from you, or meet with you and learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to learn. Definitely. That would be um, awesome. Yeah, no, he's probably going to be like... Go to the page and fill out the application. <laughs> it's on our bucket list. You all have a wonderful week. Tune in every Wednesday. This is the Conquer Life Podcast with Trey and Autumn Hollis. Episode 20. Yeah. We out. <laughs>